develop your mind, use meditation, and be able to relax your mind. So those those will be the strength and, and teaching of the Buddha for us to uh, to lead the current modern lifestyle that we are facing in a less in, in a less stressful way. But the stress, as I said earlier, is not necessarily bad as long as it stimulates ourselves to do better. But only thing is that we have to be careful not to let that stress grow until it really harm our body and mind. Okay. Even there's a positive stress. Let's say some amount of pressure depending on the workload and deadlines that we have. Actually it is we that multiply this level of stress to a higher level that can really harm ourselves. How we do that? Through unnecessarily worrying about the situation and engaging in unnecessary ruminations and unnecessary imaginations in our mind. For example, let's say you have a particular thing to achieve in, in within a given time frame. So what you do, every day you wake up, you think, oh, I have to do this amount of work today. I have to achieve this amount of uh, targets in my life. You keep thinking about that. And then, then you imagine, if I didn't do that, what will happen? And then you imagine what, what is going to happen to your career, what is going to happen to your job. And then after that, what, how is it going to affect your family? And, and how you are how you going to lose your car? How are you going to lose your house? You keep on imagining the worst. And instead of really in, attending to the workload that you have to be supposed to do, what you do, keep worrying. And unnecessarily imagine, making, making imaginations and rumination. So that unnecessarily worry, rumination, and imagination really add to the, to add the, the level of your stress. It really increases the level of your stress. That is why we feel, uh, we actually feel not the, the proper amount of stress, but the added amount of stress because of our psychological adding to those actual uh, pressure. I'll give an example, a very simple story to tell you how unwisely we engage in worrying and imagining, imagining and just in, in, increase our stress level. There's a story, uh, uh, a village story, although the stress is common to our city life, but this story is from village. There was a, uh, a village man uh, living in a very rural village, and one day he has a need to go to a faraway uh, village to meet someone and then have to return on the same day. So in his village that he lived, he didn't have um, a modern uh, transport uh, facilities, so he, he decided to walk by foot to the other village and meet the person that he wanted to meet and then come back on the same day. Since he had to travel a long distance, he decided to start his journey early in the morning. So to that day was uh, a full moon day. So he started his journey early in the morning when it's still the moon is around, let's say about 5, five a.m. So he started his journey early in the morning. So he used the sun, the moonlight. You can still can see the, roughly the, the palm trees, the roads. So he was slowly uh, walking along the road using the moonlight. So in his journey he has to pass by a river. He just had to walk along with the river to certain, in, uh, for a certain distance in his journey. So when he is just uh, going along with the river and passing the river, <coughs> because it is early in the morning, he couldn't see clearly all the thing, he, he, one of his legs slipped and he was rolling to the river. And he was trying to grab whatever thing that he can grab. Fortunately, he grabbed, he, put, he was able to grab a branch of a tree. And he, he thoroughly grabbed the, the, the branch of the tree. And when he grabbed that tree, the branch, because of the weight of this person, the branch really going down to the river. But fortunately, just above the water level, the branch stopped. So he was fortunately able to grab the branch, and but the branch bent. And he went all the way, but just about the water level, he was able to just 
uh, without falling into the water, he was able to just stop there. So, oh, thank goodness I was saved. But he looked down, there is water. And it is early in the morning, <laughs> nobody to help you. And he was thoroughly holding into those branches. And he slowly looked down again, he can see the moonlight shining in the water. He knew about this river and he was thinking, he was looking down, he was thinking, still he can see the water. So now he holds into the branch and now he's thinking, what would be inside the water? He's, he made an assumption that, yes, this is the middle of the river and this should be very deep, deep water. And moreover, he's imagining, what if and a crocodile came and ate him. He was having all those fields. And what if, if there are some, the, uh, the sharp, uh, sharp uh, stone inside this water. And he was having all this imagination and worry. He just looked at, again, looked back, looked down the water, he see the shining water. This should be a real, really deep water. There should be some uh, shiny, sharp stone inside there. No way to get into the water and hardly trap into the branches. No idea to let him go. Because when he goes look down, he see the shining water and he has all the imagination about the dense, the dense of the water the, and also the other possible harm that he may face due to crocodiles, due to sharp uh, uh, stone and other things. And he was heard, you know, that, that branch. Imagine, if you are just hanging somewhere, with your own arms, how long you can hang? And just hang some guy in your, in your roof. Can you hang for a while? For, for let's say for a long time? But what, what, what will happen? If you hang for a while, what will happen? Your, your arms will pain. And then what will happen? Your muscles, you begin to sweat, right? So this person is holding into the branch, looking down. He has no idea, no no plan to let it go. And he was hanging there for a long time. Now all the pains, the whole of his hands is painful. And he's beginning to sweat. He is having all those pressure, all those pain, but he's still enduring all the pains, no idea to just let it go, just still holding to those branches, waiting until the sunlight come and somebody will happen to pass the road and maybe he will be able to send him some rope or some help and bring him out from these branches and then can go back to the bank of the river. There's no other choice. No, no matter how much pain he has, he's still holding to those branches. There's, this, he thinks that that's the only way that he can think. Whenever he looks down, he sees the water, he has all those imagination and worrying about the the, the dense of the water and the other possi possible uh, harm that he can face. So he was enduring all the pains, he was sweating all over his body and having all the pains earlier only on the arm, now it's, now it's traveling to the whole of his body, but no way to get, let it go, just hold it. And after more than 30 minutes of grabbing and holding these branches, just early in the morning, slowly, sun is coming out. Just a little bit of sunlight. He was waiting for the morning because he needs someone to help him to get rid of this pain and sweating. Because now he has already exhausted all his energy just about to paint. And when the sunlight is bright, he was able to see the environment, other other things in the in the place. He was looking whether somebody is coming. When his sunlight is bright enough, he slowly, with a hesitant mind, look down the water. With the sunlight, he realizes water down in his leg is only a few inches deep. <laughs> All along he was grabbing to these branches and holding thoroughly to these branches because of the imagination and worrying about the the, the deep, the depth of the water and all other possible potentials. And when the sunlight is there, the water under his leg 